Hi, it's Bumble. Welcome back to my channel. So this video is gonna be a bit longer than I originally planned. So we finished up Alabasta last time, which was already pretty long. And the next uh, big major arc that I'm on for One Piece is called Skypea. I might have the notes wrong a little bit. I'm going to like mentally correct myself because I didn't know the name originally. And my brother thought it was Skytopia, but it's actually Skypea. So I have to remember that. The thing is, I actually watched all the episodes I'm going to talk about. The past two days, I got through like 20 episodes, which is a lot. And then my brother said, because I only watch the show with him whenever he's around. Um, we have like nine episodes of this arc left, but he's not visiting again until, uh, from my perspective, because Easter just passed, uh, until the summer. So like a couple of months. So I'm going to record everything I have for this arc now, because I'm going to forget it all by the time summer comes and I actually get to finish the arc. So it's going to be like a very, very long part one, which is this, and then probably like a very short part two where we actually get to finish it. Um, but yeah, I just thought I'd give the heads up. So the episode- oh, and we also skipped, I think, some Philly stuff too. So I'll be like saying what number the episode is and then talking about it. So there might be some things skipped, uh, here or there. Okay, okay. So episode 131, um, I'm just gonna start reading my notes. <clears throat> uh, the group finds an island and goes to explore, and Chopper has to stay on the ship with Robin. And at this point, she's, like, just joined them. It wasn't even, like, immediately after Alabasta that she joins them. She kind of just, like, sneaks on board. But, you know, because they had to fight her already. They don't really trust her, especially Chopper. Um, according to my brother, she does basically become, like, an older sister figure to him later, which I think is pretty cute. Like, out of everyone in the crew, he's the one she makes friends with the most. <laughs> but yeah, he doesn't trust her immediately. But she likes him, like, right away, because she just figures out, like, oh, he's just a silly little guy, you know? Which is cool, because, like, Chopper's my favorite, and I haven't seen much of Robin, um, even with what I've watched with this arc, but she seems pretty cool so far. <laughs> so yeah, they're stuck on the, on the Mary together, um, and then they end up going on a walk on the island. I don't even remember what the island was called. And this is, like, the parts I'm talking about we haven't even gotten to the main arc of Skypea yet. This is like kind of an in-between point between Alabasta and Skypea. Okay, um, and then they were gonna share backstories, but Robin doesn't really share anything about her backstory. We just know that like she's been alone since she was eight. We don't know why. But Chopper um, shares his backstory to her and we see a flashback um, where he's helping his like doctor teacher or whatever because she gets sick and he, she's like, oh, you have to help me. I'm not going to tell you what to do. This is like kind of a test. Um, so she ends up taking the medicine he gives her and it's completely fine. <clears throat> oh, yeah, I'm sorry. The reason they went to this island um, is because they wanted to get like fruit on the island or whatever. I think it was like pineapples. Um, at least it's Zoro and Sanji's job anyway, but they fail, the rest of the group fails to get the fruit, so it's really just like our first, like, completely filler episode, really, um, of just basically Chopper befriending Robin, but it was still cool, and like, even with, though we already know, um, Chopper's backstory, uh, we hadn't seen this flashback before, so it was kind of nice. Okay, and then we skipped 132. I don't remember what it was anyway, but that's fine. Um, so in 133, uh, they go by some marine ships. It's like super foggy. Um, and there's this like kid. I think he's a child. I don't remember. He has like red hair. He's like one of the, sh uh, you know what, I'm gonna take off my retainer. I feel like I'm slurring or something and I don't- I have to do a lot of talking. Give me a second. Okay, there we go. I'm not actually sure, um, if my mouse even adjusted to the retainers yet, probably at this point, but I'm like, if this entire video is me talking, like I said the word chef and I'm like, hmm. Okay, anyway, uh, there's a marine chef. He ends up falling overboard. He tells the Straw Hats that um, his, like, master chef or whatever had to 
make curry for like these really important people i think it's like the captains for the marines have like a weekly lunch where um every week someone from a different ship has to make curry but uh the kid i don't even remember his name um like accidentally spilled it so his like superior was like hey you spilled it you have to make a new curry but he's never been allowed to cook anything so this is basically like a sanji cooking episode so sanji helps him make the curry and what's interesting is like every other like sanji cooking episode i feel like we've seen so far has been like him getting into like a competition with another chef or trying to find a really cool ingredient but this one is literally just cooking and it and um uh sorry i'm like trying to think of the word here um and it's like actual ingredients and like cooking methods and stuff like as the kids making it sanji's kind of giving him non-verbal hints every time he messes it up but then you can also like with the subtitles hear sanji's thoughts of like how to correctly make the dish so he basically technically gives us the entire recipe um for this specific curry um throughout like the whole episode and what's kind of cool is that people have actually made the curry from this episode and my brother showed me pictures it actually looks really good like i'm personally I, I don't know how to cook if i'm completely honest with you but i'm like hey this might be a thing to try i mean there is a one piece <laughs> cookbook i think you can get on amazon i was looking at it already and i'm like mm, maybe perhaps but yeah it's interesting this episode is literally just cooking the same way as like you have cooking shows and stuff a little bit and I was still super, like, invested in it. Kind of weird, right? Okay. It's not even Sanji doing the cooking in this episode. He doesn't really do cooking. He just kind of helps a little bit. Okay. <clears throat> so we skipped 134. I don't remember what that is. So 135, it's a Zoro flashback episode of um, before he met Luffy. There was these two guys in one of the arcs before alabasta i don't remember which one it is it was like these two other bounty hunter guys that zoro was friends with i think one of them name was johnny and i don't remember the name of the other guy and they were kind of dorks i liked them they were like temporary companions for a little bit um but this is an episode basically on how zoro met them um and it starts out like a spaghetti western bar scene which i thought was really cool and it's basically like there's a bandit that shows up and the two um bounty hunter guys get beaten up by him and then zoro shows up to help them out to like catch the bandit or whatever and then they like beg him uh to let them join and that's pretty much the whole episode so not anything really like plot important because we've already had these characters like in the main story but eh, it was still cool i'll take more zoro episodes honestly <laughs> okay so then um oh wow I don't know why there's such a big skip here in my notes. It goes from 135, and then our next one is 144. Um, yeah, I don't remember what happens in any of these gaps, so hopefully it's not anything important. Um, sometimes it's like we were also eating, usually like eating lunch, and we're watching and whatever, and uh, sometimes I just don't have my phone with me, so then I miss- I watch the episodes. Like, I didn't actually really skip any episodes, and maybe I skipped, like, bits and pieces, or I think I skipped, like, two episodes, but there was just some times where I didn't have my phone, so I'd watch something, but then there's no notes from my perspective. I mean, there is TV trope notes for this arc, too, and for these points I'm covering that have been, like, filler arcs, um, except for 144. That one's, that one's, like, the start of, uh, Skypea. Um, but, you know, I'm trying to just go off of my notes. Okay, so episode 144, there's this giant broken ship that just suddenly falls out of the sky, which is, like, a great opener to the episode, honestly. Um, so, uh, the Straw Hats try and salvage it, but then this, um, monkey-themed boat shows up. It's, like, this ship, and on the front of it, it has a monkey with these symbols. Not, like, the creepy monkey with the symbols from Toy Story 3, but, like, just a very simple-looking monkey. I don't know why I was clapping there. Uh, like, the, I was trying to think of the symbols. The symbols do not clap. Um, for the most part. Um, but yeah, a monkey-themed boat shows up. It looks very silly. Um, and then Luffy 
I think Sanji and Zoro also, they go underwater and they beat up some of the crew of the monkey themed boat. And then the like, the monkey with the symbol, I'm going to call it a statue. I don't know what it's called when there's like, you know how there would be like mermaids on the front of ships or whatever um, as like a decoration. I don't know what those are called. Um, but yeah, I'll call it a monkey statue or whatever. It uh, It's from the front of the ship and it descends into the underwater. Um, underwater, and then the captain um, of the ship blows this big bubble through it, and it's able to bring up the salvage ship somehow. Oh, yeah, I don't know why I didn't mention this in my notes, but the captain for this ship is, like, literally just a giant, like, monkey man. Very goofy. Actually, there was a picture of him with one of the manga covers. I was gonna use it for this video, but most of this video is going to be Skypea, so I thought that wouldn't work. Um, but he is a cool design. Uh, the monkey captain, because I don't remember his name, he punches an eel in the face, but he does it the same way that Donkey Kong does? You know how Donkey Kong, especially like in Smash Bros and whatever, he like kind of winds up his fist, his arm, and then he punches. No, this captain does literally the same thing, and that was so funny to me. Oh, and for context, like, this... Um, this arc is from like 1999, so I think Smash Bros is already a thing. <laughs> I always forget about that. It feels so weird because the animation doesn't feel like super like 90s anime to me. So I don't know. Okay, Luffy ends up befriending him instantly by complimenting his makeup. Yeah, because he wears makeup. I forgot about that. Okay, so that's that episode, and then 145. Ace, he's uh, Luffy's big brother, by the way. It's basically like an Ace filler. Wait. I wrote in my notes that it's an Ace filler episode because that's what my brother told me, and I'm like, wait a minute. Okay, so Luffy, Sanji, Zoro, and the monkey captain. There's this giant turtle that just shows up out of nowhere, um, and it eats them. And then there's these, like, three giants or whatever. I think they're giants. They looked pretty huge. They're, like, these big silhouettes that are, like, far away. You don't really see them very well. They show up, and apparently <laughs> they're so massive that uh, the Mary turns 3D like a freaking PS2 model. <laughs> it's so funny. No, no, more like a PS1 model, I think. It, it was it was so goofy because like you know because this is from the 90s this is all hand drawn but then every once in a while there'd be something so huge on screen that like everything turns 3d or especially with environments like later on there's gonna be this like sky whirlpool thing or whatever and that's gonna be 3d it it's weird because it doesn't look like too much like shitty early 2000 CG where it completely throws you off. Like, it does blend in a little bit, which I'm still very surprised for, but it's just kind of like, whoa, hey, that's 3D! Like, we'll see something that's 3D, and I'm like, wait, did you did you see that? Did I hallucinate that? I say to my brother, and he's like, nah. Okay, so the ship turns into basically like a PS1 model. No, probably PS2, I don't know. Um, anyway, they end up getting away um, I- it isn't, like, shown or explained how everyone gets out of the turtle, they just kind of get out- out of the turtle, um, and then Nami is able to get an eternal compass, which is the one that, like, you know, they still have to store the- the log of the islands or whatever, but it'll, like, point them the way they need to go, they get a- they- I think Robin steals it from the monkey captain or whatever, um, so they, uh, when they get out of the turtle, there's this octopus or something, and then it's so weird because the octopus is, like, on the ship, the characters are talking, and then in the next shot, it's already octopus balls, and Luffy's eating it, and it's like, bruh? Um, you, you don't even see Sanji do anything to it or make a comment or whatever. It was kind of unrealistic, but kind of funny. Um, but it, it looks good, the octopus balls. I don't remember what those are called. I've had them before though, they're pretty good. Um, and then we cut to Buggy, of all people. We haven't seen Buggy in a while, that's for sure. Um, but he's one of my favorite characters, so I'm always down for more Buggy the Clown. And for some reason, 
Ace is on his ship, and they have a party together, and nothing plot-related happens. And I'm not saying that last part sarcastically or anything. Nothing plot-related happens. Okay, 146, um, they get to a town called Mock Town, and in this one, we get introduced to, like, a bunch of plot important characters, but I only remember the name of, like, one of them. Um, so it's called Mock Town. Everybody gets into fights there for, like, stupid reasons or something. I'm assuming that's why it's called Mock Town. Um, let's see, what did I write about? Luffy eats an apple from a sus man and it causes a building to explode. Oh yeah, there's these apples in, like, a basket or whatever given by some incredibly suspicious guy. And Luffy eats one, and he apparently chose correctly because one of the apples he eaten could have exploded on him, but instead it just causes a building to explode. And I think if I remember right, Nami ends up um, making fun of him about it, of like, you could have died over an apple or some shit. Um, so yeah, he almost dies for no reason. And then Luffy then goes to like a bar? I think it's a bar. Not to, like, drink or anything, and he gets into a, a very stupid food-related argument with a guy who turns out to be Blackbeard, which is so funny to me because, like, this whole time Ace is, um, looking for Blackbeard, and then Luffy not only finds him first, but finds him completely on accident. And the thing is, um, Luffy... Like, the show, like, with the shots, like, clearly draws attention of, like, okay, there's, like, some weird tension of sorts between these a little bit. Like, okay, this character is important. But, um, then my brother told me, like, at this point, because I didn't really get it, I was kind of confused. Luffy doesn't know, like, who Blackbeard is or what he looks like or anything, so from Luffy's perspective, this is just, like, some guy. <laughs> And it's funny because, like, Blackbeard is, like, kind of an asshole, but at this point, it's, like, he seems really chill <laughs> with Luffy, so I don't know. But then he ends up wanting to, um, to capture him later, I think, and even he even tries to follow, uh, the Straw Hats into Skypea, and they- he doesn't. Um, okay, so 147, uh, Luffy gets to talk to Blackbeard again. And then him and Zoro purposely get beaten up at a bar. I think it's it's something... You know how all the characters are, like, attached? Like, people achieving their dreams or whatever is, like, a big theme in this series. And Luffy, you know, he'll help people achieve their dreams or whatever, even if it's, like, stupid. Um, somebody makes... A bunch of people at the bar, like, make fun of Luffy and Zoro for, like, wanting to find the One Piece or... Go no, no. For going to Sky Pia, because at this point no one thinks that there's like a big sky island or whatever. Um, so they purposely get beaten up at a bar. It was honestly a little bit hard to watch, but they end up fine. And then everyone goes back to the boat, uh, including Robin, who we haven't really seen much this whole time. And it turns out that she- because the whole reason they went to Mock Town was to try and get information and learn more about the sky island or whatever. Um, and then Robin found out the information, which it took me a second to catch, but the way she even got the information was she literally just beat up a bunch of people until they gave her the info. I wish we could follow from her perspective more. She kind of feels more like a side character. Um, yeah, so she went to find the information they need and then just went shopping for cute outfits. <laughs> um, she does have a costume change in this though, which is pretty cool, because the characters- well, usually it's just like Nami will like change to match whatever like place they're in, so they're going to like a warm island, because Skypea is basically like a beach island thing, um, as you can see with the different outfits in the poster. Okay, so then they come across yet another crew of monkey, uh, salvagers. Uh, and their leader is this, like, giant orangutan who has, like, super long blonde hair. Not that he's, like, a blonde orangutan, but he has, like, long blonde hair like a human does. And he sings, and it's bad. It's more like screaming, honestly, but it basically 
um, is like supersonic waves pretty much, and that just starts destroying both boats, and by that I mean his own and the, um, the Mary. Okay, so then episode 148, uh, they get to this little island, and they're looking for this guy named Cricket, who they thought would have like a big palace or whatever, and then it turns out to be a cardboard cutout, which is kind of funny, but it turns out later to also be plot important. Um, and then they find this picture book, which I thought was going to be like a joke thing, but it's like directly tied to a bunch of stuff we learn in Skypea once they end up getting there. So the picture book, I didn't really write any notes about it because I thought it was going to be imp um, not really important. What is cool with the picture book is that the art style for things like changes to match the book like when they're reading it then it's just like focused on the book and it it's the art style of the book but basically there's this guy his name is Noland he is known for being like a huge liar and he supposedly says there's like a big city of gold that sunk into the ocean or whatever and no one believes him and he tries to find it, and then I think he's like put to death or whatever, and he still believes that it's there. Um, so yeah, he's he's I mean already dead at this point, but his like story is important. And then they end up meeting his great grandson, who is the guy that's named Cricket, um, uh, who tried to prove that Nolan wasn't a liar by becoming a pirate, but he's like a retired pirate at this point. Um, and he agrees to help them uh, get to the Sky Island, and he tells them how like every day for 10 years he's been diving into the ocean, um, trying to find like the city of gold from his relative or whatever. But he's not doing it to like disprove the family legacy. I think it was just like to know if it exists or not. Um, okay, so then, oh, hold on, my notes went a little, open up the wrong tab there. Oh, that's weird, it's not scrolling, give me a second. Dang, I have to scroll back. I hate when it does that. Um, ba -ba -ba, give me a second, give me a second. We're almost 50 episodes in, by the way. <laughs> okay, so episode 149, uh, the monkey people are there. Uh, yeah, the monkey people and Cricket, they give the Straw Hats a bunch of advice. Oh yeah, the monkey people, um, work for Cricket, by the way, they're all, like, buddies or whatever. Um, yeah, but they give the Straw Hats a bunch of advice about the island, and then they all party and drink, and then, after doing a ton of drinking, are told, uh, the Straw Hats, I mean, they're told, like, oh yeah, you have to go into the woods in the middle of the night to find a bird, and otherwise you're not gonna get to the island. It's like, bruh, why didn't you tell them sooner? Um, so they split into two groups. I think Usopp, Nami, and Sanji are a group, and then everyone else is in, like, a second group. But they're all, like, still in the forest. They just go, like, in different directions. They have to find a bird. I think it's called the South Bird. It's, like, purple and really colorful. And it's a bird that, like, always points south. Like, if you try and move its head another way, it gets uncomfortable and it, like, forces its head back to pointing wherever south is. So it's basically, like, a sentient compass in a way. Except, you know, instead of pointing north, it points south. So they have to find that, or otherwise they're kind of screwed. Um, so then while they're in the forest, I was kind of surprised. There's a scene where, like, they find a bunch of spiders and bugs and shit. Usopp, who is known as not only a liar, but like a huge coward, is surprisingly not afraid of spiders or bugs, but Nami and Sanji are, which I was surprised about, but it was still pretty funny. Okay, so then, uh, 150, we're on 150 now, very cool. Um, so the, uh, the South Birds, I wrote in my notes, I referred to them as creepy toucans. They apparently can control bugs somehow to attack everybody, and it, it's one specific south bird actually. It has a very smug aura that just mocks them, and it also has teeth for some reason. It's really weird. I don't I don't think they're supposed to have teeth, like toucans or whatever. But you know, I'm not a toucan expert. So, oh yeah, one of the guys who beats up uh, Luffy and Zoro at the bar 
His name's Bellamy. He's really annoying, actually, and apparently he c continues to be in the series or whatever. Um, so his devil fruit thing, it's probably called, like, the spring spring fruit or whatever. It's basically, like, he has springs, not even like springs on his feet, but his legs are able to turn into springs. Um, like the kind of springs that you can like jump on. So he easily beats up uh, Cricket and the monkey people. And while that's happening, um, you know, the Star Hats are still in the forest, so they don't know that's going on. And it's really funny because like they spend hours uh, trying to catch that stupid bird. And then Robin catches it in like five seconds. It's like sitting on a tree and she looks at it and she does like her weird hand thing and catches it instantly. And they all just kind of look at her and she's like, what? I have to be able to see it to be able to, she has to be able to see something to be able to use her abilities. Um, and then Luffy decides, and he's on like a time limit at this point to run all the way back to Mock Town. Um, cause they end up getting to the monkey people and Cricket and seeing they got beaten up and Luffy's like, damn, I, I guess I gotta go beat up Bellamy and his friends for doing this to you guys, so Luffy has like three hours to run over there and do it, and he does- oh yeah, at this point Luffy's bounty, I don't remember the number, but it's significantly higher now, because- because the thing is, like, the military, the marines, whoever's in charge of the- the, the bounties or whatever, they know that, um, it's like the world government or something, they know that Luffy beat up Crocodile, and because Crocodile is one of the seven warlords of the, the sea, it's like a super big deal, but, you know, they have to keep that hush-hush, no one can know, but at least what they can do is, um, raise Luffy's bounty, so it kind of, to everyone else's perspective, it just seems like Luffy's bounty went up for, like, up by a lot for, like, no reason, um, so yeah, Bellamy figures that out. It, it's kind of played off very dramatically where some like drunk guy is telling them, Bellamy and his friends at a bar of like, oh, that guy you beat up who didn't even defend himself. Yeah, he has this stupidly high bounty or whatever. His Luffy, Luffy and Zoro, I think at this point are the only ones um, with wanted posters and with bounties at this point, but they're like, oh, these two guys you beat up. Yeah, they have this, they have a bounty that's higher than yours. You might want to get out of here. Um, so, yeah, Luffy fights Bellamy, and Bellamy talks, like, way too much shit, and then Luffy literally just beats him with one punch, which is honestly very satisfying, but then the monkeys and, uh, Cricket end up being fine after getting the shit beaten out of them, which is awesome, because the, the show made it seem like they, like, were basically close to death, and I'm like, damn, these characters are cool, um, but they end up being fine. And then we see this big government meeting between these, like, five elder dudes, and basically they want to find a successor to Crocodile, because now there's only six warlords of the sea. Um, and some of the warlords uh, show up to the meeting as well. Uh, there was apparently a bunch of, like, plot-important characters that were introduced, but the thing is that segment went by so fast, I didn't really get to write about any of them or even, like, mentally process who all of them were, so I don't have any notes on that, sorry, but they'll be important later. Um, at this point, they don't really matter as much right now, from what it seems like. Um, and we get to see Whitebeard for the first time, who, um, is who Ace works for, and not only, uh, he doesn't have a beard, He's also fucking massive. He's a large lad for some reason. But it's still so funny to me that like we've seen Whitebeard and we've seen Blackbeard. Neither of them have beards. <laughs> Actually, um like Blackbeard I think just has like a mustache or something. Or no, not a mustache. He has like some stray like facial hair and it is black. He does at least have black hair. Whitebeard has no beard. He just has a very weird looking like white mustache for some reason. Okay, so we're on 152. We still have a lot of notes to go, but I'm just gonna get this all done in one go, and then in like a couple of months, <laughs> I'll be able to finish this arc. They haven't even gotten to the sky yet, by the way, so oof. Okay, so episode 152. Um, Luffy, of course, comes back late, and the Mary is prepared, and is decorated to look like a rooster, probably because they're gonna go to the sky, they even add like wings to it, 
would it looks very silly um and then it turns out the reason luffy was late was because he found a hercules beetle he mentions catching a couple of beetles and he mentions them by name and they're all because he loves catching beetles apparently and they're all beetles you can find in animal crossing it's like such an animal crossing trait that he was late and he's like look guys he's like holding it up i found it i found this beetle isn't it cool and they get pissed at him about it, but it was so funny. Lo Honestly, I want to, like, draw him in the Animal Crossing style with Beetle. <laughs> it sounds fun. Like, the same pose the villager does with their little, like, ball hands where they show the camera the buck that they caught. <laughs> yeah, that's such an Animal Crossing trait. Anyway, they sail um, into this huge whirlpool and Blackbeard, we finally get to see what his ship looks like. It's just this stupid looking, like, log boat. It's like in like movies and shows where you try and build a raft out of a bunch of logs and it's really like crappy looking. That's it. That's his whole ship. It's just so funny to me that there's like super strong people like him or Mihawk who have like the tiniest boats ever. <laughs> well, Mihawk's is kind of cool because it has those like goth green candles and it's shaped like a fucking coffin um we do get to see him briefly in one of these episodes i referred to i think he's the one that finds the the posters the wanted posters for luffy and zoro first and he ends up like spreading them out everywhere um anyway so then the mary uh there, there's like this giant water thing that takes them into the sky and it like freaking flies over the water as like the theme song is playing which is pretty cool i think the last time the theme song for the show like like the main one i mean played uh during an episode was when they got to the grand line but that's pretty cool it seemed to be used for like really cool moments where they're going somewhere like completely new or whatever so they finally get to the sky so then in episode 153 they're able to sail in the clouds. Uh, the clouds function as like an ocean somehow. I, I don't know, man. Um, Usopp's even literally able to swim in it. And it's funny because we see um, Luffy and Chopper look at him and they're both like, man, that looks so fun. We want to swim too. And I'm like, why can't Chopper swim? I'm like, oh, right. They're both devil fruit. Um, I keep wanting to say devil fruit users, but no, they both ate a devil fruit which means that the sea hates them and they don't have the ability to swim. Which is still so funny to me because like everyone we see that like eats devil fruits are pirates, which means they're constantly on the ocean. <laughs> and then I forgot- oh. oh, hold on, my notes got messed up. Uh, I have to go back. Give me a second. Where? Where is it? Did I delete something? I better not have deleted anything. Okay, so um, I forgot that Robin, because her flower flower fruit is basically she can sprout parts of her body in like other places and stuff like flowers, but she always just sprouts out her hands and I forgot that she can sprout them from literally anywhere. So like there's a part where like I think Usopp falls too far in the clouds when he's swimming and then Luffy stretches out his arm to grab him and then Robin puts- because Luffy can't see anything because he's just stretching out his arm. So Robin gets one of her eyes to sprout out of like Luffy's hand so that way as he's extending his arm she can see for him basically. Um, it looks kind of cursed but it's also really cool. Honestly that is totally something I could get a tattoo. <laughs> like a hand with an eyeball because i really like the way robin's eyes are drawn like most of the female characters their eyes are drawn like in the same way as nami's sometimes there's literally female characters who have like the exact face of nami except like different color eyes and robin feels more unique where like her nose and her eyes are like completely unique to her because she has like a really long nose and then these like kind of almond shaped instead of circle shaped blue eyes but there's like different shades of blue they look really cool um i don't know maybe i'll look into it <laughs> um so they meet this knight he's like this old guy with a beard and he's called the sky knight he's dressed in armor like old-fashioned armor and whatever 
and he tells them that the clouds um, that they're in are referred to as the White Sea. Um, and he is a bird, and the bird is pink with like purple polka dots, and the bird is named Pierre. And the only thing that the bird says is Pierre, like a Pokemon. And I just wrote as my next note, bird ate horse horse fruit. Bird becomes very stupid looking horse with pink and purple polka dots. Yeah, um, for some reason, because <laughs> of the horse horse fruit, uh, Pierre is able to go from being a giant bird to being a giant horse, but because he's still, like, technically a bird, he basically becomes a pegasus. He's actually in the front of this poster, I just noticed it. The thing with, like, the white wings in the center, that's, that's Pierre and the Sky Knight. Um, on the poster, they make Pierre look really majestic with, like, these very white feathery angel wings. But nah, in the anime, especially in the scene when he transforms for the first time, he looks very stupid and underwhelming. Because you see the transformation, you're like, oh, cool, he gets to turn into a pegasus. Like, Nami's hyped, and then you see what the design looks like, and it's like, bruh, this is ugly. Um, so then the important thing, though, is that the Sky Knight, he gives them a whistle... Um, for emergencies. There's also this guy with a mask that ends up attacking them. That's why the Sky Knight shows up in the first place. And both these characters and stuff end up being important later. But yeah, the Sky Knight gives them a whistle. Um, I think Chopper ends up being the one to use it later. And then after playing on the clouds, uh, they find this giant golden gate called Heaven's Gate. And then... A giant shrimp pulls them up what's basically a battle for bikini bottom slide level. <laughs> okay, so then 154, they're finally in uh, Skytopia. And then I saw as they're going up there, um, Robin was holding Chopper, like not in her arms, but like her arms sprout out of the ship and like are grabbing him because he's so tiny, so he doesn't fly off. It was cute. It's like something that's kind of more in the background, but I'm like, aw. And they end up on a beach uh, made out of clouds, and it looks like a tropical island. It honestly looks really cool. It looks like it'd be like a fun... I'd love something like that with Animal Crossing or an Animal Crossing type game where it was more like fantasy based of something like this. Of I just I like the idea of like a beach, but then instead of water, it's like clouds and it looks like a tropical beach. Like it has sand and palm trees and stuff, and they even having like costume changes and stuff. Um, so they meet the first resident they meet uh, for Skypea. Oh, I said Skytopia earlier, didn't I? It was in my notes. Um, Skypea, that's what it's called. They meet this girl. Um, I, Her name starts with a C. I don't remember. Um, oh, yeah, everyone in Skypea, well, not everyone, but, like, the natives, basically, they all have these, like, angel wings. Because Skypea is basically, like, themed around heaven. Like, there's clouds, and there's a guy who calls himself God, and all the people have angel wings, but the wings are really tiny and underdeveloped because it was driving me crazy throughout the whole thing where I'm like, why aren't they flying anywhere? But their wings are underdeveloped, so their wings are literally just like for decorations and to fit with like the vibe. Um, so they meet this girl, um, she has these braids, and she has this really cute like little purple fox, and it does look like a fox. But the way it sounds and its design reminds me a little bit of Eevee, which is kind of nice. Um, I kind of wish it had more of a like angelic or cloud-like design. It kind of just looks like a regular fox, but purple. So that was a little disappointing. Um, and then they meet her and they meet her dad and they get to hang out with them for a bit. And the dad, her dad has this like motorboat type thing and Nami gets to ride on it which is pretty cool because it because the clouds um because it's technically a sea even when they're on Skytopia some of the clouds not all of them um still functions as an ocean like Luffy tries to go swimming and he still manages to drown in the clouds which is so funny so like Nami's the one that like does all the ocean stuff in this so they go to the house of these people and there's basically a bunch of tech that is like designed to look like seashells so it, it's basically like like our normal stuff but 
it looks not like the entire thing is like seashell looking, but it's like the seashell. It, it's kind of no, I was gonna say it's similar to Dragon Ball with the capsules, but not really. It, it's more of like seashell tech, we'll call it. I there's an official name. I don't remember what it's called. Hold on a second. This is a lot of talking for me. This is gonna be probably like a two hour. You know what? I'll wait until this gets to like an hour and then I'll make this a part one. I, I don't know if people have the attention span like like I don't um, for more than one hour for this video. Because this is gonna be a multi-parter. Anyway, um, yeah, so Nami gets to ride what's basically a motorboat and then the girl they make friends with shows them all the seashell tech. It's basically things like tape recorders, ovens, lamps, a fan. It's not all just like home equipment. There's other cool stuff too, but this is what we're kind of being introduced to. And I thought, I wrote in my notes like, oh, this would make a really cool Animal Crossing furniture set of like seashell themed stuff. And then I remembered that a seashell set for Animal Crossing um, already exists actually that's that's pretty cool that's actually one of my favorite it's called the mermaid set i think let me let me pull up a picture really quick i could even show it to you guys too um animal crossing mermaid set let me pull this up um no wait this isn't what it looks like in the show but it is a very pretty set it's one of my favorites okay um Hold on. Lying back down. There we go. Uh, so then Nami... No, the rest of the group uh, is with their new friends and whatever, and they're on the island, and then Nami takes what I'm just going to keep... I think it's referred to as a waiver, um, but I'm just going to call it a motorboat. Uh, Nami accidentally, while she's on the motorboat, finds an island that God lives on, it's not like- I have to explain this character really quick. It's not like God as in God with a capital G of this universe. He's basically just kind of like the king of uh, Skypea, but all of the characters refer to him as God. So when I'm referring to someone as God in, the, in these notes, I'm just referring to like this king character. And his ability is like lightning, pretty much. So that's part of the reason they also treat him as God. He's apparently supposed to be really fucking strong. I haven't gotten to the point where like Luffy fights him yet. Um, that's gonna be at the end of this arc. I have so much to read. Okay, so Nami ends up finding that island, and I think the girl's name is like Cronus or something. Uh, it's, it's something with the sea. She says how um uh no 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 yeah Cronus ends up telling them as Nami like finds this island of like hey your friend might have gone to this island that is like restricted to us it's the one place we can't go because God lives there so Nami ends up finding it and the episode ends so then 155 uh, Nami, she hasn't like actually gone on the island yet, she's just kind of hovering around the front. She hears some people talk about treasure on the island, and then a bunch of people start a fight in the forest, and then Nami sees a guy get obliterated just out of nowhere. It kind of looks like an energy blast from the sky, or like a nuke, like a bomb, but it's actually supposed to just be like... A ridiculous amount of lightning but it isn't like drawn to look like lightning I just thought I should like clear that up right now um so the god his name is Enel I'm just gonna I think his name is Enel I'm gonna just refer to him as Enel then um I forgot what his name was sometimes they refer to him as god sometimes they refer to him as god Enel or just Enel I'll just refer to him as Enel um and then we see that the Skypea military is like targeting um, the Straw Hats, it's this whole, like, little sequence where basically, um, they're like, oh, you committed this crime, you have a first degree offense or whatever, and it's like a gag that goes on for, like, five minutes as they keep racking up more and more, um, Offenses. It's It basically all starts because when they originally got to Skypea, there was an old lady that said she was like 
the guard or something when they got to that Heaven's Gate thing, and she asked them originally to pay a fee, and they said they didn't have enough money because it's like a stupidly large amount, also because Skypea has a different currency than the Blue Sea does, where the, the normal currency for this series is called Berries. Um, I don't remember what the Skypea currency is. Um, of course, our crew doesn't have the money, and then the old lady's like, oh, you can just- I'm not actually a guard. You don't have- you don't have to pay anything, you can just go in. So they just think that she changes her mind, so they go in, and then we see her once, uh, everyone else is off screen. Um, she sends out this, like, telepathic message saying, hey, a bunch of intruders showed up, uh, you can kill them or whatever, um, so that's why they have this offense and they're being hunted down, but, like, they don't know up until this point. And then Nami runs one of them over with a motorboat. <laughs> she runs over, like, the captain of the military when she finds out how much money, uh, they owe for their offenses or whatever, and that- that kind of does it in a bit of, like, okay, you're officially wanted by the military here. Um, okay, so then episode 157, um, the Straw Hats are told to head home- if they want to head home, They'll have to go because there's the white sea and then there's like another level above that of like more clouds and it's called the white white sea um and they want to get there secretly everyone in the boat except i think luffy's off doing something they want to get there without luffy knowing because luffy wants to go to the island that enwil is at um even though it's supposed to be super dangerous and they're also not allowed um and then a lobster takes i think everyone except Luffy, Sanji, and Usopp, because they're like in a house somewhere on, on the island. A lobster takes everybody else and the ship as either hostages or sacrifices. It kind of depends. I think it's actually supposed to be a sacrifices, so they're being taken on the super- someone like calls a lobster and takes them to the, um, some kind of sacrificial altar in like a forest or whatever on the spooky island so yeah now sanji usup and uh, luffy have to go rescue the others and get the ship okay and then episode 158 uh konis uh decides to go with them to get to the sacrificial altar and to find their friends um so they go to this like downtown area i think it's called like lovely street or something and while they're there, they're being fired, followed, my bad, not fired, followed uh, by the Sky Military, who are called the White Barrettes. Um, I didn't remember their name, it was just, I just saw it in my notes. Um, and then it's revealed that, oh, I wrote Conus in my notes, and then I wrote Cornus. I'll just go with Conus. Uh, she betrayed them. She's the one that, like, she was forced to call the lobster that took away their friends. And at first you think they're going to be pissed at her, but then they're like, why didn't you tell us sooner? We could have, like, helped or whatever. Um, not to, like, take their friends, but, like, you know, this could have been resolved faster or something. And then they almost get taken out by a huge energy blast, which, well, I wrote that in my notes, but it's lightning. It's, they get taken out, almost get taken out by a bunch of lightning. Um, I think... Luffy and Konus are rescued from the lightning by the Sky Knight and Pierre, and then they're taken to this- Konus takes them to a dock that has a bunch of boats, and Luffy wants the really cool boat, but then they're just stuck with a, um, <coughs> a silly little boat that looks like a crow, and they're gonna be on the crow boat for, like, a while. It's also very, like, tiny. It kind of looks like, um, like an amusement park boat. I don't know if amusement park's the right word, but whatever. Okay, so episode 159, um, we've, well, we're already almost on 160 here. Uh, they have to ride through, yeah, Conus I don't think goes with them, I think she just takes them to the docks and that's as far as she'll go. So now it's just Luffy, Usopp, and Sanji, and they have to ride the crow boat through a forest, and we see the Mary on this like giant platform at the sacrificial altar. And then Zoro leaves to go fight, like, a giant creature or whatever. Um, and then everybody's, like, fighting monsters in the forest. And then Zoro goes into the forest alone. And then Sanji and Usopp talk about, like, their faith in God a little bit. Not God as in, like, Enel, but, like, God with a capital G, pretty much. Uh, I don't think they even know what Enel's name is yet at this point. And then Zoro 
um, does a freaking, like, Tarzan scream while swinging on a vine, which I was not expecting, honestly. So he leaves, and then Robin and Nami end up going with the, with them, um, and then Chopper is left alone on the Mary, while still on top of the sacrificial altar, by the way. Okay, so then episode 160, uh, Luffy and the others, they have to do these, like, four tests referred to as the ordeal, and Luffy picks the ordeal of balls because it sounds fun, so now it's time for the ordeal of balls, and the balls are, like, made out of clouds, but they're referred to as, like, surprise clouds or surprise balls or whatever, I don't remember. And it's basically like you touch one and a surprise happens. They're not good surprises. It's like, um, <laughs> like spiky things. Like one of the balls they touch has a snake in it and then another one just like explodes. Um, and oh yeah, the, the people who are in charge of these like four ordeals that they have to do are referred to as priests. And they're like the four people that work like directly under, um, animal or whatever um and the first one they meet is like ball shaped and he just dances around he's very silly and he has these really cool like yellow glasses that are round and they remind me of the sunglasses that i have um even though they don't really work well for sun and he has a very like high-pitched voice and is very silly and dancing around i liked him a lot actually um not for like a too long though because his ordeal lasts for Ever. So he shoots out energy or something like that that supposedly destroys the body from the inside as he refers to it. Um, and he also has the ability, I, I don't remember what it's called, I, um, where he can predict movements. Like before you do something like he'll know, oh this person's gonna like kick me with their left foot or whatever and then he's able to dodge it and it's not that ability to like predict movements sorry i'm like forgetting to breathe for a second here i'm good okay the ability to predict movements is not exclusive to this character like about the other priests and enel um also have this ability except that enel's is so strong that he's able to sense literally like everything on the island and that's how he's able to just shoot lightning out of nowhere um so the ball guy i'm just gonna refer to him as the ball guy i do not remember his name he sends the crow boat away on like a slide so luffy and everybody has to go and find it or else they can't leave and luffy gets his ass kicked by the ball guy so then okay the next couple episodes i don't have like a ton of notes which is good it's weird because they're not like it's like only a couple of more episodes before everyone reunites with each other because they're still split in the two groups um but they felt so long this arc feels like very slow uh, like describing it in my notes it doesn't feel that way but like me actually having to sit and watch them it was very long <laughs> Okay, so episode 160, um, Sanji chases after the crow boat and Usopp like guides him around or whatever and they're still like in the forest while they're doing this. And then a quartet of singing birds come out of the balls and then comically beat up Usopp. <laughs> and then Chopper, uh, meanwhile, because he's still on the Mary um, alone, he gets attacked by some like really scary guy with a bird that shoots out fire. I think he's referred to um, as one of the priests. I think he's like, because there's like the ordeal of balls, there's the ordeal, ordeal of iron, the ordeal of string, and then the ordeal of swamp. I think the guy that attacks Chopper might actually be the ordeal. Is he either the one for string or the one for swamp? I think it's the one for string, but like, don't quote me on that. So Chopper gets attacked by him and Chopper is like, small and terrified so he blows the safety whistle um to call the sky knight um and then before the sky knight can get there because it takes him a little bit oh and this is on episode 161 by the way the mare is actually just set on fire and chopper is like desperately trying to uh, put it out it's kind of almost sad to watch because chopper's like 
no, stop, don't set the ship on fire. And you're like, aw. Because there's only so much. Like, Chopper is one of only, like, the three people in this crew that has a devil fruit. Um, and even though he's also, like, a literal reindeer, um, he's, like, the weakest out of the three. So he he's not very strong and he kind of knows it. He's used to, like, people protecting him. And then he also curses for the first time, too, which I noticed. And I think he ends up calling the the guy that's attacking him a bastard, which was kind of funny. Um, and then Chopper ends up fighting the priest, and then the Sky Knight shows up to help out. And that's pretty much like the whole episode, I think. And then episode 163, um, meanwhile with Luffy, Sanji, and Zoro, uh, they have to fight a dragon that's like made out of these cloud balls. And then it's revealed um, that the Sky Knight, like as he's fighting one of the priests, is actually the former god like he was god for like six years or whatever and then enel shows up um and the sky knight does actually have a name i think it's like golf fall or something but i didn't write that in my notes so i'm just gonna keep referring to him as the sky knight so yeah that's why he's like so strong and whatever he's literally like the former god or basically like their former king pretty much i don't even remember how and will like taste over or anything. I think it was just basically like he showed up one day with his priests. Um, and then the Sky Knight is like supposedly killed, but I think really he's just. Um, uh, severely injured or whatever. And then the episode ends with Luffy actually getting on the little like cloud that the bald guy is on and actually wraps himself around him to hold him down and then Sanji actually just kicks him in the head which is very satisfying too because that fight it's like sort of a fight sort of them dodging the clouds but also them like trying to find their boat the crow boat it goes on it's not like that many episodes it's like three four but it just the it takes up most of the that episode time so it just feels really long okay so then um episode 164 i think i'll get to like 165 and then i'll stop there for now because this is already almost an hour um so there's a rebel group that's like this tribe i don't remember what they're called um they want to kill all the priests and kill enel and then sanji usopp and luffy um, barely get to their crow boat in time because <laughs> once it leaves out of the forest they don't really have like a way out um, so then the island that everyone's on actually turns out to be from the ground we're finding out some like interesting lore stuff here it's actually from the ground like you know everything else is on the ground and that's why there's dirt because everything's made out of clouds like what they walk on so there's no dirt up there so the sky people um, think that dirt is like a very sacred thing and like things from the world below are like very sacred to them and stuff like there's this little girl for example um, that can like sense people's life energy or whatever and she carries around a bag of dirt and it's like her most precious treasure or something I, I still don't know what her role in the plot is by the way at the point where I'm at but whatever I don't even remember her name honestly um so then it turns out uh, that Nolan, the guy from the picture book, wasn't actually a liar and that the place he found, the City of Gold, was actually an island in the sky and he thought that it, the City of Gold had like sunk into the ocean and it sort of did, it did end up in like the ocean but it got blasted by whatever like wind thing shot up our crew into the sky so the city he was looking for was actually just ended up in the sky the whole time but of course he didn't know which is a little sad to think about because it means that cricket who spent the last like 10 years looking for it and diving into the ocean was like literally never going to find it um so yeah the island of gold is there it's just no one knows where it is um but with episode 165, Nami's really happy to find out that the Gold Island <laughs> is where they're at. They just, it's just somewhere in Skypea because, um, I think it's interesting because with her backstory, it's understandable at the beginning of the series, like, why she's so obsessed with money because she was trying to get enough money to buy back Coco Village, uh, from Crocodile. And it was always weird to me that, like, even after, um... You know, crocodiles defeated 
her village belongs to her and everybody else now, and she doesn't have a reason to, like, worry about money as much anymore. She's still, like, super greedy money-wise and, like, money-obsessed, so I guess it just kind of maybe became a personality trait for her. I don't know. Okay, anyway, so then in that episode, uh, yeah, 165, everyone actually reunites back on the Mary, like, while riding the crowbow. It just takes them back to the sacrificial altar, and then everybody else ends up there. Um, well, I think Chopper... I think Chopper's still there too. I think he like leaves for a bit and then comes back. Um, so they're there and the Sky Knight's there too. He ends up being okay. He's just very, very injured. I think he's like in a room in the back or whatever on the boat. Um, and then the group shares info with, of like everything each of them went to do. And it's also a nice little recap of like the past couple episodes. And this is the point where I'm going to stop because then it kind of slows down a little bit. Not like in a boring way, but just like a, okay, the group's together again, they get to chill and exchange information. They get a little bit of breather room here. I have, um, like a couple more to go. Maybe I should just finish it. I don't know. Um, cause I have from 166 to 175. Yeah, you know what? No, 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 I'm just gonna, I'm gonna finish it. I'm actually gonna pause so I can drink some water. We're just gonna finish up till 175 because that's um, all I have notes for. And then this will just be one video and then your next video for this is gonna be uh, hopefully the rest of this arc. So just give me a second. Okay, so I had a glass of water. Feel a little bit better now. Also changed where I'm sitting so I'm gonna just a mic. Just the mic. Okay, so episode 166. Uh... Oh, Nami does something different with her hair here. You can sort of see it on the poster. She has her hair in pigtails for the rest of this. Um, I can't say the rest of the arc because I technically haven't finished it yet, but for at least with the point that I'm on, uh, she still has them. And they look pretty cute. I like that she's changing hairstyles too. And because her hair is already short to begin with, it's kind of like to her shoulders, it ends up being these really tiny pigtails. Okay, anyway. Um, she figures out where the gold is, because the thing is... <sighs> Sorry, it gets a little hard to talk when I've talked for an hour straight. Um, so they had a map, like an old map of Skypea. I don't- I think they find it in like a treasure chest or something. Um, in like the ocean or whatever. I think when they're looking through like trying to salvage that other boat, um, uh, and they combine it with this new Skypea map that they end up getting from a character while they're there. So by combining the maps, they can figure out where the gold is. It turns out that the two maps show that Skypea is actually shaped like a skull or something. And one of the things they heard from Noland in his logbook that Robin was reading was that the gold is hidden like in the right eye of the skull, and they didn't know what that meant, but the island shaped like a skull, so it's basically showing them where to go to find the gold. So then they go camping and have stew, and then Nami, there's like these wolves that show up, and Nami just punches one of them in the face and ends up befriending the wolf because the wolf we could see through Chopper's translation is like, hey, I like the cut of your jib, and they become friends, and then... <laughs> They have a dance party and get drunk with the wolves. I am not kidding about this. And then we learn that the plants, like, aren't natural to the sky, like, even all the tropical, like, trees and stuff. And they're referred to as Verth. I'm probably gonna forget that term, but I just thought I'd let you know. So then, episode 167, uh, the priests end up actually fighting each other, and we finally get to see Enel. And he has a surprisingly calm voice. I thought it was going to be like a booming loud voice because he's like treated as God. But no, he has a very like chill voice. And he also has these like really stretched earlobes for some reason. He's the dude in the back with the big hands if you can't tell. Um, and then the Mary was like magically repaired in the middle of the night. Usopp almost catches who did it and then he passes out before he can find out. So we don't know who did it, but the Mary's fixed because it was all broken from being, you know, set on fire by one of the priests. 
And then Chopper gets used as bait to lure in. There's like these sky, they're referred to as sky sharks. They're basically just regular sharks that live in the clouds because, you know, the clouds are like technically an ocean and they're circling around because they need to get the Mary off of the sacrificial altar. But, you know, the boat's too heavy for them to push. So they're going to get one of the sharks and use it to pull the Mary off. And they use Chopper's bait. And the poor little guy is just absolutely terrified that he's going to get eaten. He doesn't, though. He's fine. He's just, like, I don't know, probably traumatized afterwards. So then episode 168, um, the group ends up splitting... Do they split? I think they split into two and then get separated in the next episode, if I remember right. And they're just wandering around the forest for a while. But for now, they're in like two different groups. I think Luffy, Zoro, Chopper, and maybe Rob. I think also Robin are like in one group and everyone else might be in another group. So 168, yeah. Luffy makes fun of Zoro's shitty sense of direction. I think this is one of the only times Zoro's sense of direction, like, being made fun of is actually brought up. Because it is, like, a character trait, but I didn't really notice it much in the beginning, if I'm honest. Um, and then something that was kind of cute was, like, Luffy ends up just finding a stick in the forest. It's, like, nothing special, by the way. It's literally just a stick. And Chopper gets so excited and tries to find his own stick. I think he eventually does. Um... So then we find out that the forest, this like little island they're on, oh yeah, it's referred to as Upper Yard. I completely forgot about that because I never wrote it down. Um, it was, like I said, originally from the ground and the natives of it are like an entire group of people. They're, they're basically kind of like the Native Americans of this pretty much, where it's like the sky people took it over. And they're, the reason they're, like, trying to fight the priests and Enel is because they want their land back, which makes sense. Um, so then episode 169, Luffy and everybody end up getting separated. I, I wasn't really sure how they got separated, to be honest. Um, and they learn about- oh, right, right. The seashell tech is referred to as dials. They learn about one that basically functions as a bomb, and it turns out, um... All the, like, magic shit. This is explained to them by the Sky Priest, by the way. Um, all the magic shit that the priests were able to do, like the fire-breathing bird, um, and the ball guy making people's insides explode or whatever, um, was actually just the, the seashell tech. Like, the fire bird thing was basically, like, there was, like, fire... A fire dial or whatever that was inside the bird that somehow didn't harm it. And then it would open its mouth and shoot fire out. So it's all like technology stuff. Um, oh, right, right, right. The um, the ability to like uh, predict your enemy's movements. That's called mantra. I can. I was trying to remember what the name was. It's basically also explained here, and it's pretty much just like super hearing, pretty much. Um, I don't know why I said that twice. Okay. So then the string pr priest ends up getting killed by a bomb to the chest, and then Enel- no, I wrote Ethel in my notes. Was it Ethel or Enel? I thought it was Enel. Whatever. God uh, just doesn't care about that. And then he also has these soldiers that work for him that are referred to as the Divine Soldiers. There's 50 of them. So they show up, and they're basically like goat people but they're more like human than goat they're like human bald humans with like goat horns and ears and they make goat noises and you think that goat people would be really cute but they're not they're kind of ugly and a bit cursed and then uh luffy he's on his own at this point he's wandering around the forest and he sings for a little bit he sings very badly um and then episode 170, we're almost done. We just have to get to 175. And then we, I don't have any more notes after that, which doesn't seem like a lot, even if this video is like an hour long, but this was like 20 episodes I did in like two days and I like binge them for like five hours straight or whatever. So this was like very exhausting and long for me <laughs> to get all these notes for you because I had to like watch and write all this stuff down. Um, Okay, okay, so, wait, hold on. Yeah, 170, Robin ends up getting in a fight. Um, she twists the neck of one of the goat soldiers and kills him in like five seconds. Apparently this is how she usually fights people. 
<laughs> oh man. And then Zoro has a really cool fight with this guy that has two guns. I don't remember if he's one of the priests or not, if I'm honest. And then Enel shows up um, onto the Mary and then just electrocutes Sanji for like no reason. I think he ends up electrocuting Sanji and Usopp. So they're both knocked out and Nami's with them and she's like trying to protect them. Um, I think that might be a later fight, though. So, 171, uh, Luffy gets shot into a hole in the ground. So that's the way he's gone until, like, the plot lets him come back eventually. It's kind of like with Dragon Ball, where, you know, Goku's the main character. We can't have him fight, like, the the... Uh, the villain arc until the end of it, you know, to keep the story going. So then he's always separated from the rest of the Z fighters. They basically do this a lot in One Piece, but with Luffy. So this time he falls into a hole that he can't get out of um, until the plot lets him fight God. Uh, <laughs> oh, and then it turns out the ball guy from the Ordeal of Balls, um, he has two brothers who were also goat people, but they have like the same glasses as him. I don't think they're ball shaped though, I don't remember. Um, and then Chopper uh, starts calling out, trying to find everyone else. And then there's this scary guy, it actually turns out to be the Swamp Priest, but there's this scary guy and Chopper like pokes him in the nose with a stick. <laughs> And then 172, Chopper has to fight the Swamp Priest. He doesn't even realize that Chopper's a reindeer. He thinks that Chopper's like a little raccoon dog or whatever. And then Chopper um, removes the enemy's flying shoes and hits him really hard in the stomach. And that's how he wins, apparently. Um, so that's that episode. And then 173, uh, the bald guy's brothers, I, I don't know their names, um, they play around with some of the unconscious straw hats while uh, Nami tries to fight them, which is actually her first fight since Alabasta and she gets to use- she has this like weather stick thing that can like make hot air and cold air and it's basically like a wind based thing. It's okay, I guess, as a weapon. And then she gets to use a glove. She gets it from the Sky Knight. Basically, it's like the Nintendo Power Glove, and then the the um, the Sky Knight actually abandons her. Oh wait, yeah, the Sky Knight abandons her. I don't remember where he goes. And then Nami gets the motorboat thing for free because the group. Oh yeah, it's called a waiver. Um, Um, when they were still on the ground, when they were salvaging the, the ship that fell from the sky, they- I don't even remember when it happened, but it keeps getting brought up in this arc when they're at Skypea. But, um, they find a waiver when they're salvaging, and I guess they took it with them, but it's old and it's broken, it's like 200 years old. But, um, Konus's dad ends up fixing it, and then Nami ends up getting it for free. Which is pretty cool. She's kind of the only one that knows how to ride one. Like, you even see her riding it on the poster. And then Enel gets stabbed in the head, and it does nothing because he's like basically made out of lightning. So then 174, uh, Zoro gets- oh yeah, the South Birds are also on this island. There's like a variant of them that looks the same, except they're like huge. Like the, the South Birds on the ground, like on Cricket's Island Forest or whatever, um, those are like normal bird size, but the ones in Skypea are like gigantic for some reason and Zoro gets followed around by one of them but he doesn't realize that it's basically a living compass that always points south he's just like why is this giant bird following me go away and it feels really ironic because he's the one with the shitty sense of direction I shouldn't, I shouldn't even say shitty sense of direction. He has no sense of direction. And he gets followed around by a living compass because it's trying to get the food in his back and he doesn't notice, so he still ends up lost. Um, and then Robin fights a really fat guy and just fucking strangles him as she's... Um, she throws... He falls off a cliff that she sort of threw him off and then strangles him as he's... She's fucking brutal, but she's also so cool. Um, 
So then after winning her fight, she explores the ruins and realizes, hey, I found the city of gold that everyone's looking for. Because her and like four other of the straw hat, I think it's pretty much all the straw hats except Luffy. Um, I don't remember what Usopp's doing. I think he got separated too. Him and, no, him and Sanji are unconscious. Nami's in the boat. And then Chopper, Zoro. Yeah, Chopper and Zoro are trying to get to the city of gold or whatever. Robin gets there and then Luffy's stuck in a hole. Okay, I have to remember that. Um, like sometimes the show even shows you like a map with a picture of everyone's faces of like where they are and how far they are from the city. And the funny things from where they were originally at, they literally just needed to go in a straight line to get to the city. But they all ended up getting separated and then completely going the wrong way except for Robin um, but she finds the city first which is cool because she's basically like the group nerd she's like the historian who she's like constantly reading and looking into stuff like this she's like pretty much a um, archaeologist so she's like hyped when she finds the ruins and goes to explore and actually the whole part where she gets to explore at the end of this episode of looking through the ruins is like really slow paced but it's nice it's kind of calm actually I liked it um, Okay, episode 175, and this is the last one I have in my notes for now. Um, Chopper gets to the ruins, he's the second person to get there, and then Zoro bullies the south bird, so it ends up taking his lunch. It also takes him, too. It picks up the bag with his lunch, and then he's, like, hanging on to it for dear life. And then Luffy has fun um, exploring this, like, underground cave that he's in. Uh, he ends up finding like a little golden crown. I don't know if it's actually made of gold or not, and he just wears it. But like, he doesn't take off his hat to wear it. He just puts it on top of his hat, which is kind of funny. And then Nami uh, gets chased by the. There's this giant blue snake that pops up every once in a while, and it has like a beard or some shit. So Nami gets chased by one of those, and then the South Bird drops Zoro to get so that Zoro gets eaten by the snake because it's like you, you see it's thought process in like little little pictogram things where it's like oh if I drop Zoro then the snake won't eat me and it'll eat him instead and then I get a free lunch so it drops him and that's all the notes I have for that okay so if I end up a little sounding a little confused for the rest of this arc for the next video it's because there is like a several month long gap possibly uh before i get to record the next one of these and have any notes but we've pretty much covered most of this arc i know this was an hour and 20 minute video but i just wanted to get through all my notes now while it was still like sort of fresh in my head and just get everything in there you know all right so next time we're gonna finish the um skypea arc okay i'll see you then bye bye